Let's have a look at the speed light menu. So what we'll do is we'll turn it on. And as we turn it on, the red light on the padded button turns on too. So if we press on this button here, you'll be able to trigger your flash. Very handy if you want to see if you have enough power in your speed light. So this run with four AA's batteries. I would highly suggest you guys get some uh, rechargeable batteries. You get a lot of use out of them. Also very useful if you want to test your uh, output, like the, how strong your flash will be. Uh, you can go and change in a manual mode the power of the flash from full power to 128 of the power. So you can make some tests by pressing on the pilot button. This button here, little light CFN, if you press briefly on it, that will illuminate the LCD panel. If you hold this for a few seconds, that will bring you into the custom function settings menu. It is not user friendly on the speed light. I would recommend you use the book that came with the speed light or go into your menu on your SLR buddy. Then you'll be able to have more information and it's a little bit more user friendly that way. If you know what you're doing and you want to do it straight out of the speed light, you can press on set button in the wheel and just turn it right or left and then press back. So you can set up that way. If you press on mode, you're gonna go back to the main menu. There's three different modes on the speed light: ETTL, manual mode, and multi mode. Without going too much in details, I'll explain a little bit what the mode are all about. ETTL mode stands for evaluative through the lens. It is an automatic mode, so when you set up your camera and your flash, you want to take a picture and let's say feel the light on a subject in a sunset. When you take a picture, your flash will quickly send light that's going to come back to your speed light. The speed light will process the information and send the amount of light missing to fill the light on the subject. So this is a no-brainer and it's also very useful and very user-friendly mode. The manual mode, it's a mode where you can play with everything and change it yourself the power, the zoom, the range, and everything. The multi-mode. Now this is a little tricky. This mode is a stroboscopic flash mode. So what I mean by that is you can take a series of rapid flash to capture, let's say, a moving subject on a low exposure on your camera. You can go with the bulb mode if you want, a very slow shutter speed. Now, the Hertz, the HZ here, express the fire frequency. Now there's a nice graphic in the book that will explain that in detail. I won't go too much in depth in there, but I will suggest that you bring your book, or open the book and make some tests with that multi-mode. So let's go back to the ETTL. Now, you'll see there's a zoom written here, if you press on the zoom button it will be flashing. Now you can move the wheel so now it's on manual, you can see it's an M there and it's 24 millimeters that you can go all the way to 105. Now on every mode you can play with the zoom, not only the manual mode. So if I bring it back like this I won't see any M so it is on automatic right now. Now this button here, you have little flash and an H and three triangle. Something I'll go a little bit more in depth and detail once we go through the menu on my 70. But this is where you can change the first curtain, the second curtain and the high speed sync. Now if you press on this button here you'll see this high speed that comes right next to the ETTL. The second curtain, three triangle goes straight there and this will be in the first curtain. If I press in the middle here you'll see there is a little sign flashing over here so this is the flash exposure compensation. Now that you can change either here or on your uh, SLR buddy, your DSLR Canon. On my 7D there's a nice little button I can press on and change that very easily. Now we'll explain a little bit 
more in depth and detail in, in a different video where we'll take you outside and we'll play a lot with it. So once you play like this, you move the wheel, then you'll be able to change it that way. If you press one, two time, now we get three different triangles there. So this is the flash exposure, sorry, the flash exposure bracketing. So three different flash, and you can change the stop on every single flash. So what I mean by that, if you are into HDR photography and you take three different pictures, sequential picture with different stuff, you can match your flash to go with it. If you're not too sure what it's all about, you can take a look on your camera. Okay, You should be able to uh, play, you should have a multi uh, exposure bracketing as well on your camera so you can take a look what it, it's all about. So that explained briefly how the ATTL mode, what you can do with it. Now if we go to the manual mode, it's a little bit more or less the same. If you press the middle here, you'll be able to change the strength of your flash to full to all the way down to 128. If you press back in the middle, you can go like this. The zoom button is the same thing. You can go up and down. Let's say we want it at 35 millimeters. So 24 millimeter is a very wide and short broad distance as versus 105 it's actually pretty far out and it's a little bit more like a beam of light going straight to your subject so you can create very nice effect by playing with those and if we go to sorry the multi then hertz out there if you press once in the set button here you can change the hertz to all the way up all the way up to 199 and then you can play with all these things and then you'll see the graphic into the book and I'll explain a little bit more the 19199 like what it will do for you alright so this is a little bit how to navigate slave in there now if you want to use this unit as a slave or as a master you need to hold the zoom button for a few seconds now that will happen, mean that right now there's nothing going on, this unit will be used on your camera. Now if you turn, whoop, that wasn't fast enough. Now if you turn your wheel there, you'll be set it up as a master or as a slave. So let's say we want to use this as a slave. Now we can change the actual zoom the channel one two three four by pressing the zoom button we can navigate to the channel and the actual slave unit a b or c all right so now we can press the zoom button back bring it to normal and this is how you navigate through the menu on your canon speed light we're in the canon 70 menu right now if we go to the first camera one dot straight to the end you'll find the flash control menu in there you'll find the built-in flash and the external flash function or the custom function now if your speed light is on your camera you won't be able to go into the built-in menu you need to have your flash powered on as well as being on the camera to be able to go to the function settings here now all these function settings can be changed straight from your flash. You don't have to go in this menu to change them. Let's go over the menu here. So the flash mode can be either ATTL manual multi-flash, the shutter sync, so your flash will synchronize with the shutter speed at high speed, first curtain or second curtain, the flash exposure bracketing. So if you move your wheel here, you'll be able to change the stops the flash exposure compensation the same thing if you move your wheel you'll be able to change the stops if you go to the ETTL evaluative mode or average mode now the zoom can be changed here to be manual or automatic and the wireless function either disable or unable now let's backtrack and go to the custom functions now there's 13 different 
functions here that can be changed. Now, it is way easier to read and change them in this menu than straight from the flash. There's explanation and then you can see what it's all about. So I recommend you guys do it from here instead of doing straight from the flash. All right. So now let's talk about the oh, let's talk about the shutter sync. So what is the synchronizing between the shutter speed and the flash? So if I turn my body here, if we take a look, let's change the camera a little bit. And if we take a look at my body here, inside my body there's a mirror, all right? So if I bring my shutter speed to five seconds, when I take a picture, what happens is my mirror go up. Then the light hit the sensor, record the picture, and then the mirror goes down, and that's the end of the picture. So when the mirror goes up, there's a curtain that goes. And just when the mirror goes down, there's a second passage of the curtain. So first curtain go, record the light, and second passage of the curtain, it's over. Alright? Now when you take a picture, the rule of thumb here is if you take a normal picture that does not require a very slow shutter speed or very fast shutter speed you put your flash on the first curtain so your flash will synchronize with the first curtain if you need a very slow shutter speed then you need to put your flash to synchronize with the second curtain or if you need a very fast shutter speed so let's talk about a thousandth of a second and over you need to have your flash on the high speed sync so your friends going down a mountain with a mountain bike taking a sharp turn lots of dirt flying in the air you want that dirt to be crisp and you want the flash to hit your friend now you need to make sure that your flash is on high sync otherwise your maximum speed of your shutter speed you will be able to go to is 250th of a second so first curtain and second curtain are maxed out at 250th of a second as you go on high speed then you can bump it up to whatever you feel like so to demonstrate here I'll take a normal shot at the first curtain. So you'll see the mirror going up and down. That's 250th of a second. And there's one flash. Again. So now I'll take a flash. We'll be synchronized with a very slow shutter speed. So let's go back to the five second. Here's the flash will trigger once then the mirror goes up and then just before the mirror goes down in the second passage of the curtain it'll fire again so fire it once record picture and it fired just before the second passage so the flash synchronized with the second passage slow exposure and then we'll put up to high sync high speed I'll bump it up to two thousandth of a second so the mirror goes up and down and the flash fire right in the middle. So think about this, 2,000th of a second. So basically your curtain goes so fast, the flash needs to synchronize right in the middle. So that's why we need to make sure that we're on the high speed sync. So hopefully this is useful.